What a blessing. Good to see all of you again and always a joy to be with you in this service which is fast becoming one of my favorite services to preach at. Last week you were very enjoyable and I know that this week will not be different. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yesterday too we were blessed to have to be honored with the presence of His Excellency, the President of our country, at a wedding here yesterday. So, <laughs> prophecies are happening. One day it will not just be the President visiting, but it will be him a member. Like there's a member in terms of membership that this is his church. The president of the country, this will be his church. Every Sunday, he'll be sitting here receiving the word of God. And we hear they will make him clap and, and stand up to receive the word and things like that. He cannot sit quiet. <laughs> but it was very honorable. And so many ministers of state were here. So many of them. I mean, name it, claim it, and take it. <laughs> So sometimes when there's a wedding, you don't know who will appear. Every now and then you should be visiting some weddings to see who you will find there. That's a blessing. But we are blessed to be here today. Pray Easter Sunday. Clap for Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this morning. A great privilege to be here. Worshipping you, loving you, serving you, fellowshipping with you and with your people as we come to the word of God today. We ask that you will open our eyes to behold wondrous things out of your law. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Beautiful Lord, wonderful Savior. Now, we have a number of things to do today. I'm going to preach and then um, we'll pray a little bit towards our Good Friday miracle service. I thought somebody would be excited, clap, you know. It's coming up. It's coming up. It's going to be great, it's going to be powerful. I just want you to have, you know, a different posture. You see, sometimes when you go for a big program, some people don't like big programs, it's like, it's too big. But you should, every now and then, go to big programs. Professor, do you understand? <laughs> so... Why? Because it's a different atmosphere. And I think even in the stadium, it's even more glorious. Because the sound is a bit more, the um, acoustics are a bit better. So the shout of the people, the prayers of the people, the worship will be very different. But, you know, for one reason, I want to thank God that we are meeting at the Accra Sports Stadium for the first time. Because many years ago, our father, our prophet, our founder, he used to say, one day, how many believe that one day we'll meet in a stadium? And we were just in one church. We didn't have even a branch. And one day we'll meet in a stadium. One day we'll meet in a stadium. How many believe one day we'll meet in a stadium? And this Friday, by the grace of God... That prophetic word will be fulfilled. And you will be right there in the fulfillment of prophecy. One day we will meet in the stadium. And that day has finally arrived. I want to be there to see how God makes words. that, And I tell you that this is like more than 30 years ago. More than 30 years ago. That is why if there's a prophetic word, 
Don't just brush it aside. Sometimes when it hasn't been fulfilled, just lock it up. Lock it up in some cabinet and keep just opening and looking at it from time to time because one day you see it come to pass practically in your life. So one day you drive a nice car. Do you believe in that one too? One day you live in your own house. Is it something you can believe in? One day you will be the owner of a house. Like you are now a tenant, but one day you will be the landlord. You, you rather will have tenants. And then you'll be collecting rent and increasing rent. Now somebody is increasing rent on you. But that prophetic word, that one day you will be a homeowner, a landlord with tenants. I don't know whether you build a compound house, but I don't know whether you live in a compound house, but you should build an apartment. Because the days of compound houses are over. We are now in apartment complexes. You will own apartments. You're collecting rent in dollars. Hey! Somebody is asking, how will it be possible? You see, these are not things you, questions you ask. In those days, we, I was there and I used to just shout, Amen. And I was just hoping one day that when we meet in the stadium, I'll be leading worship. Do you understand? But of course, I mean, I don't have to be the one, but at least we'll be doing worship. Even if I'm not leading, I'm worshiping. Yeah, I'll be part of the group that will be worshiping and dancing and shouting in a stadium. Because 30 years, over 30 years ago, the prophetic word was spoken that one day we will meet in a stadium. One day. That day has happened. It's coming. You will be alive to see it. And when you are walking into the stadium, tell yourself, every prophetic word spoken in my life will come to pass. Whether it's for my... That I've, I've said before that you will not sit before a doctor. And he will give you a frightening diagnosis. Maybe you don't understand it. But what I mean is that you can sit in front of a daughter and he will say, Hey, how old are you? Is that not so? And, and he said, How old are you? Because what I'm seeing is for people who are in their 70s and, and 60, 65, who have retired and, you know, 65, 70, 78. And I can see it in you. How old are you? Then you say 28. He said, Oh. How? How? You will not sit in front of a doctor for him to give you a frightening diagnosis that there's some cancer somewhere, that there's some failure of some organ somewhere, that something, something, pressure is too much and that you can easily die or you can easily have suffer a stroke or that, you know, uh, you know, you need some operation, some procedure to be done. They have to cut open and close and either put something inside your body or take something out of your body. It will not happen in the name. Yeah. Do doctor, is that not what you do? Either sometimes you put something inside or sometimes you take something out. Yes. God has created you nice like this. Then they have to cut, 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 cut. By the time you are, I, I knew a man, he had some kind of, I don't know whether heart operation or I don't know what operation he had, but he had a big cut on his chest. And after they sewed him up and he came living normally, he was a tailor, a tailor. It used to itch so much that he would use like scrubbing brush you know, to scrub his chest. Like, I don't know why. Why does it itch like that? Eh? The scars of the chest here, they are prone to keloid formation, which has become, when the sky heals, you see some bumps over it. So those ones, that's why the area there itches so much. So as you continue to scratch it, it has that tendency to grow into the keloid. Yeah. See, you will not have something like that. Yeah. You, you won't say amen to it. Eh? Yeah. You won't say amen. You see, because what, what happens is that it's not that something will be given to you or something will be done, but what it is is that God shields you by the words. Yeah. 
by the words. Because it's been years, so it's been years, and we are here saying that on Friday, the 29th of April, uh, uh, of March, we are going into a stadium for a church service, not a football match, not athletic meeting, but we are there in a church service worshiping. You must be in a stadium with your hands lifted, with your voices raised up. And when you are raising your voice, when you are clapping, when you are dancing, you are telling yourself that me too, whatever prophetic word has been spoken over my life will be fulfilled practically in my lifetime. Shout a big amen and clap for Jesus. Clap for Jesus. Wow. God will do it. 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 Concerning your marriage, God will do it. Concerning your business, God will do it. Concerning your children, God will do it. Concerning your future, God will do it. Concerning your health, God will do it. 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 Somebody shouting in his car because he can identify with what I am saying. God will do it. You will not divorce. You are not divorcing. Maybe you have seen it all around you, but you are not divorcing. And you are going to get married. I, prop I tell you, you will get married. People have laughed at you. People have wondered at you. But you will get married. The couple that married yesterday went through so many challenges before the, the, the wedding could come on. And I kept telling them, it will be okay. You will marry, cry. It is coming on. It will be okay. And yesterday it came on. He was always thanking. I, I was even calling him to ask what time they were coming. He had already sent me a text thanking me. Oh, Bishop, thank you for being with us all the way. Because I'm with you all the way. I am with you all the way. No, I am not the only one with you all the way. Jesus is with you all the way. He says, even to the end of the, of the world, he will be with you. Yeah. And those are valuable things that a person will be with you in your trouble and in your difficulty. Anyway, let's just, I think we should just take the moment and pray about Good Friday. I think I, I'm already in that mood. So please rise up on your feet, somebody. Um, and and uh, this, after this service, we are going to finish a little earlier today because we are going for a float. All of us, if you have a car, you have a whatever, do we have a truck? There's a truck with a, a, a sound and music and then we'll be jumping and sharing. Do we have flyers? We'll be sharing. We'll be sharing. So join and be with us. Okay, because today, you see, God is giving you an opportunity to be part of the Good Friday. You see, the Good Friday is, is an event that happened maybe some more than 2,000 years ago. But I want you to know that when what we are doing in this season is putting us into that Good Friday. It's like we have become part of it. Jesus is the one who did the hard work. And we are the uh, carriers of the good news to let others also experience Good Friday. It was a terrible, uh, what? What did they call it? It was a terrible Friday that became a good Friday. Terrible. The son of God was slain. Jesus was killed. But it became a good Friday. A good Friday because your sins were washed away. A good Friday because salvation came to you. A good Friday because you now got a right to become a child of God. A good Friday because your name can now be written in heaven. A good Friday because one day you will also have a place in that eternal kingdom. In that city whose streets are made of gold. Whose light is not the sun, but God himself is the light of the place. That day you will also be there. So I want us to pray for a few things. Number one, we want to pray for a burden for souls as we are going for Good Friday. You see, because... When you don't have a burden, it's like, I'm just going on my own. Media, I'm saved. I always tell of uh, somebody who works at a place and then is able to do graphs. 
if he's doing reports with Carlos and everything, and her colleagues don't have that skill. So when it's time for reporting, you see that she has brought her nice graphs, very beautiful colors, very arrows and number, very beautiful presentation. But his other colleagues are papers with handwritten numbers. <laughs> and some numbers are on this sheet, some numbers are on this sheet, so they have to now take a calculator and add to know what is the total for the month. Oh, hey, my boy. Meanwhile, this one has done presentation, month, month, then amount, then numbers. Oh, very beautiful. So I'm just saying that when God has blessed you that way, you must extend your hand to be a blessing to others who don't have, who are not that privileged. And to us, we, we know of Good Friday. It's taken for granted that everybody knows. Some people know of Good Friday, but they don't know the significance of Good Friday for their lives. And so that's why we are going on a float. Join us. It's just a few minutes. After that, you just go home. But join in. And, and I pray that that burden for souls, the burden for the reason for which Jesus came to die, that when we say Good Friday, there's a reason for it. And that reason is not just that Jesus wanted to die, keke. But he actually suffered for you and suffered for me. So just for a few minutes, lift your hand and just pray. Father, give me a burden for souls so I can take some souls to this Good Friday. Oh, Master. Marako siaka pare. Shandala maraka satara la mama ramanaya. Join us to pray. We are praying for Good Friday. Oh, yes. Marato sandarama. Ria mahandala badaraba shikerebe suria. Rama Handala Barande Kotaria Bajada. Oh yes. Oh yes. Give us a burden. The kind of burden that made Jesus go to the cross. The kind of burden he had for humanity that made him die for our sins. The kind of burden that, that make, made him endure the suffering, endure the beating, endure. Oh, that made him go up there. He has done the hard work. Now we must also receive the burden to endure the shame, to endure the despisement, to endure the stigma associated with going out, to reaching out, They're associated with, with serving God, associated with being believers, associated. Give us a burden, Lord, a burden, Lord, for lost humanity, a burden, Lord, for men and women on their way to hell, a burden, Father, for souls that are perishing. Oh, souls are dying, souls are parting. How many will die in Christ? How many will enjoy the benefit of Good Friday? Oh, Marata Sindele Mekoriada, Rapatosia Mahandalaba. Yes, Lord. Oh, mighty God. Let's pray for the anointing for soul winning to be upon us. To be upon our church. To be upon the prophet. To be upon us as we go out there. That the anointing that makes soul winning possible. That anointing will fall upon us afresh in the name of Jesus. Shall we pray? Maratasi andalaba. Ramakasandalaba. Ramashidara. Reko sandalaba. Nepatoli amazanda. Ye la maramajanda. Indala maraka sandalabada. Rema sobadia mahandalaba. Zentele menoria. Merendele me koria bazanda. Sandalama, Nindoro de Bosia Mananda, Ekeria Bashita Lama Zandala, Rico Tabia Kada. We are praying, oh God, for this Good Friday service. Lord, anoint me to be a soul winner. Anoint me to carry men, to carry women, to carry boys, to carry girls. Oh God, into your presence to experience salvation. Anoint me for with the spirit, the grace and the 
the anointing and power of a soul winner anoint me to serve you anoint me embolden me by that anointing to draw men to your kingdom embolden me by that anointing to draw men into your kingdom alio kasinda laba rapato sayanda laba rekuata zidiala and finally let's pray that many souls will be won on that day we are praying for salvations real genuine turn around that sinners will be converted to Christ and that the, the, the wicked will be transferred to the kingdom. The idol worshiper will turn to serving the living God. Let's pray that God's power will be present to save souls and, and bring them into his kingdom. Shall we continue to pray? Handeli maradi giale, echio masifa liga vara diesa, manja ndeli moradi kefa male, onda jali marata zia, e mayaka dendere mozia mi handeli minaria. We are praying for salvation of souls, Lord. Use us to win souls, Lord. Turn many around, onda lirana. Turn my brother around, turn my sister around. Enton jali mara, zenko adile, zimataya. Colade, ripa do lande limina, anie cavanda la baride sionale, in the celi mi cava, rapanda la bada. Clap your hands as you pray. Just finally, one more minute. Aninge de le mesuba, lara basende le bedo, ria kapanda la, reko sayale, ah, pasho dalibara, nekora mishala, reka balimala, andenge de le mene, nemrenende le breda, hilie kapanda la ba, reko sabia kabale, nento chale mara, remanende le breda, eng. Talabada, Ria Casanda Lava, Nepalia Gadale, Reco Sabada, Nincha Balia, Izeba, Yapiaca, Vinele, Honda Chali Maragaza, Baragada Gada Gada, Reto Sandala Marama, Jesus, Mahandi Limora, Nendora Baba, Ramana Mana, Indo Sikia Badale, Rimanda Balala, Lima Kalale, Zio Cafa. Aliga, Marato Saminge de, Shia Kafandala, Eto Chabi Yahada, Balo Kasinde, Shalike Roka Zigada, Baraga, Blessed be God, Ashindele Mokare, Zinte Ne 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 Oh yes, thank you Lord, and then finally let there be miracles, miracles, and I need you to have a good posture. That this service is not just for some people, but I'm also in it. And whatever God is doing, if he's saving souls, may I not be lost. If he's healing people, every sickness in my body that has been left there, that has, it's like I've prayed, I've bound, I've, hands have been laid on me, but it's still lingering in my life. That sickness will drop on that day in the name of Jesus. And that many more people will also experience the healing power of Jesus Christ. Shall we lift our hands and pray? Manoria ba raka sandala ma reto sandere menari ale reko sandara bada. Yes, Lord, for the service for Good Friday, let your anointing, the anointing that breaks yokes, the anointing that brings healing, let that anointing marabada rabada. Let it be on full manifestation, anointing to heal, anointing to deliver, anointing to heal, anointing to deliver a pia kafale moncha la mirada zio kafandala rico satande liaba rato kanindala alige de rebo shivarale reko saba jesus thanks a million for what you will do and what you are doing in the mighty name of jesus oh yes thank you lord thank you mighty god he will do great things Great things he has done, greater things he will do. Oh. Unto
to the Lord, be the glory, great things he has unto the Lord, unto the Lord, be the glory. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. We worship you, Lord. We exalt your name. Marando Casabiale. Ria Mahandele me Kuria Basanda Badari. Seyonda la Mara Mashanda la Baburia Bagada Dada Babaria de Rianda la Mara Mazanda Dada Mamaria Dada Mamara Mada. Ria Mamanda la Bashenda de Bokabara la Basayana. Ria Mahanda la Basanda Bakuria Mada Bada Bada Badaria. Ilia Mahanda la Bashanda la Badaria. Father, we thank you for this wonderful morning, 
for the privilege we have to be in your presence. Lord, we ask that your word that is alive will come through for us and bless us today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you. Luke chapter 19. Luke 19. Yeah. Last week we began to uh, we talk about the triumphal entry and the few lessons from there and I just want to pick it up because we are in the season of his passion and we are just about to uh, there will be a Passover then there will be a betrayal then there will be a crucifixion on Friday so we are just reenacting them and today I want to talk about some notable pre-Easter personalities. Yes. Yes, notable pre-Easter personalities. There are some people who are very significant. We must learn some things from them before uh, we enter Good Friday. So, just go with me. We will take it up from um, this portion where he says, and they went their way and found Jesus sent the disciples in verse 29. Last week, we were reading it from uh, Matthew 21, but today, uh, 21, yes, we're doing it now from Luke 19, 29. And it came to pass when he was come nigh to Bethphage and Bethany at the mount called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples saying, go ye into the village over against you in the which at your entering in ye shall find a cold tide. Whereon yet never man sat, lose him and bring him hither. And if any man ask you, why do you lose him? Thus shall ye say unto him, because the Lord hath need of him. The Lord hath need of him. And they that were sent went their way and found even as he has said unto them. So last week we, we learned that we must be sendable, isn't it? And today I'm, I'm sending you on a float. Will you go? Are you going? Kesti mami, are you going? <laughs> Fantastic. And they that were sent, they went their way and found even as he has said unto them. And as they were losing the cold, the owners thereof said unto them, why lose ye the cold? I mean, there are people that are tied by the devil in various bondages. We are going to untie them. Amen. And if somebody asks you, why are you making so much noise and trying to get people to go for such a service, we will tell them that the Lord has need of him. The Lord has need of a friend of yours. The Lord has need of a neighbor of yours. The Lord has need of a relative of yours. The Lord has a need of a colleague of yours. The Lord has need of some classmate of yours. You do you understand? And, and, and therefore, we must go and untie them. Some people are tied. Yes. Some people have been tied into all kinds of addictions and bondage. Even when you untie them, they can't even move. Because they are used to it. That's why some people come to church and they are still in their old life. Because it's like, it is, they are so used to living that life that they can't break out of it. But by the grace of God, you will untie that coat and you will drag that coat to Jesus. And ensure that he changes and he becomes what God wants him to be. Is it a good idea? Then he says, and they said, the Lord had need of him. The Lord has need of him. It's a very nice title for a message. The Lord has need of him. Tell your neighbor, the Lord has need of you. And they brought him to Jesus. They cast their garments on him. And then the story went on. So today, let's look at these notable personalities. I believe that we can learn a few lessons from. Just mention them very fast because I'm going to try and be very brief. In Mark 14, we see the first of these persons that came along the journey towards Golgotha. In Mark 14, the Bible says, And being in Bethany, in the house of Simon, the leper, 
as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard, very precious. And she broke the box and poured it on his head. And there were some that had indignation within themselves and said, why was this waste of the ointment made? For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and have been given to the poor. And they murmured against her. And Jesus said, let her alone. Why trouble ye her? She hath wrought a good work on me. For ye have the poor with you always. And whensoever ye will, ye may do them good. But me ye have not always. She had done what she could. She's come aforehand to anoint my body to the burying. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever the, this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she hath done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. Hallelujah. So here comes this woman as Jesus is in Bethany. This is the journey, beginning of that journey. Then he goes, then various things happen, and then he's crucified eventually. But here comes a woman as he sits to eat, and then she pours an alabaster box of precious ointment upon Jesus and anoints him. The Bible says that, and then she break the box and poured it on his head. Hey, how awkward. I don't know how it will be if you are sitting there and somebody just breaks a nice perfume box and pours it on your head. Hey, a girl too. <laughs> huh? Yes. Fantastic. Do you see? And there were some that had indignation. And I'm sure that if somebody were to do it here, some indignation means that you are angry. Some who became angry at the whole situation. They were bored. Because some people get angry when there's something honor showered on a person of note. They have a bad attitude towards honor when somebody's receiving. Why is she doing this on him? Why is it? And then the, even some of the disciples, like bishops and pastors who are sitting in front, were also angry at the whole thing. You know? <laughs> some. I hope you are not in the sum. Ask your neighbor, I hope you are not in the sum. Yeah. They, had, they were angry within themselves and said, you see, within themselves, why was this waste of the ointment made? Eh? For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and have been given to the poor and they murmured against her. You see? And then Jesus gave a response and the response is also giving it today that when a person is honored, when a person who is worthy of honor is honored, when your man of God is honored, when your prophet is honored, when your father is honored by some of your siblings, do you understand? When your husband is honored, some women don't like their husbands to be center stage. I don't know whether it's jealousy or it's like even when the children honor the father in a certain way, it's like, it's like eh? you are feeling good. <laughs> you are feeling great and they wish that it was rather them you see but if you are you know there are various relationships that deserve honor you know a husband deserves honor a wife I'm looking at scripture so of course she deserves honor but I mean yes she deserves honor yes please yes please <laughs> no problem it's on TV, so I have to be careful. <laughs> a, a, a wife also deserves honor. Yes. God deserves honor. Jesus deserves honor. Holy Spirit deserves honor. Your pastor deserves honor. Do you understand? And your parents, your father, mother, all deserve honor. It's in the Bible. I'm just looking at scripture. Now, what this woman did... A lesson is just a short lesson, and I'm going to just say it and then move on. Is that Jesus said that she has, and Jesus said, Let her alone. Why trouble ye her? For she hath wrought a good work on me. 
for ye have the poor always, and whatever time you are, you can do them good. But me, I do not have me always. Because you don't have, the people you honor, they are not going to be there all the time. So when you have to honor, honor well. Anyway, so he says, for she had done what she could. She is come a fourth time to anoint my body to the burying. Please change the, change the version. Change the version and give me that same verse to NASB. Okay, message. Okay. She did what she could when she could. She pre-anointed my body for burial. She pre-anointed my body for burial. And you will notice that when Jesus resurrected on Sunday morning, the women went Sunday at dawn to go and put their expensive spices there where he was buried. When they got there, then he was gone. Then they said, where have you laid our master? He was gone. He was too late. So you came with your nice perfume and came with your nice ointment, but it was too late. So the good lesson for all of us is that honor and honor timeously. Is there a word like that? Yes. Honor and honor timeously. Honor in time. Honor when, don't honor your mother or your father or your pastor. Do you understand? When it's now too late, like often we do that when people die. When somebody is alive, he never goes to a nice restaurant, he never sits on a good aeroplane, he never, but when he dies, it's now that your things have come. You see, and Jesus said, this thing that she has done, everywhere we preach the gospel, what she has done will be spoken of for a memorial of her. It's like, it's a notable work and it's a notable person to the point where up to today we are mentioning her. There is no uh, viable Good Friday without a mention of her. Or you can't easily talk about honoring somebody without mentioning her. That honor and honor in time. Honor, value a person and value him in time. Don't wait till he dies. Don't wait till he can't see. So if you have a... When my mother died, I had no pressure to impress anyone with anything. So I told the people that me, I'm not giving food. Though. It was not pandemic. Though. There was no pandemic. It, the culture in Ghana is that after funeral service... There is sitting, they, they call it funeral rites. Yes, where you sit, eh? Final funeral, final funeral rites. Where you sit and then you receive uh, in Sawa. And I say, hey, you don't have to give me in Sawa. I don't need you in Sawa. What am I going to use it for? Most of the time it's used for the burial. It's for the two ex funeral expenses. And uh, it's not necessary. I don't have any expenses. Food. I, my sister was putting pressure. So what about those who travel? I said, oh, if they travel and come and they are my relatives, I will, of course, you come to my house, I'll give you food. So we'll go to the house, we'll eat there. But people who have just come there, oh, it was my classmate. Oh, Auntie Vic, Auntie Vic, oh. When you close, go home. I give you water, go home. Yes. I give you water, go home. And in any case, my mother who has died, it's quite a, a, a painful experience for me. It's not now that I'm coming to sit down and eat over her body like that. And, maybe, and most of the people who are eating, they are not sad. <laughs> I'll put it to you that they are not sad. You are the one who is sad. They, they are, quack, quack, quack. Within file past, make their face straight a bit, go and sit down, the service they are in a hurry, they should finish the service early, now we, we need to eat and then we need to go so when they finish and they come for reception it's not like they are coming to I mean, mourn with you, it's like once we are at the reception, mourning is over it's enjoyment Ah, now chicken is so I don't know my chicken, no, I'm not so cry. Chicken, no, no. And then fried rice, no. I don't think that, uh, go and get some more for me. Take another package for me. I don't understand why they, they'll be quarreling over your sadness. I told them that I won't make any food there. If you want to make food, make uh, finance it yourself. I will not give any. I bought the fun, uh, coffin, everything, flowers, finished. I have a place I'm going to bury her. That's all. And water. Water to people give me gifts of water. Finish. I don't have any expenses again. All the expenses, I put it in her life when she was alive. I made sure she had a comfortable place to stay. I visited her 
virtually every week to go and just sit with her and just be there. No agenda, no there's nothing like there's a reason. Yes, I've come because uh, hey, that's you are discussing this and I want no. There's no agenda. My mother, I want to be with you. How long are you going to be alive for me to see you? I want to be with you and just be around. And often at her age, 80, almost 80, when she was approaching 80, she was sleeping a little more than before. So you, she even be talking with you and then she sleeps. Then when she wakes up, she continues the conversation because she has not forgotten all. It's just that and then me never fun and it's okay. <laughs> Small sleep just passed in front of her eyes and she cleared it off and then she's now continuing. The conversation is pepe pepe. I'll be there. Sometimes you just sleep. Then I also sleep. Then when we wake up, we are just there. He's not cooking for me or every now and then. She used to make some nice fancy stew be with beetroot and some things which will mix. Very nice. Oh. Hey. With some pepper and then fried yam and pork or chicken. Oh, fellowshipping with my mother. That was honor. That's honor. That's honor. Not to wait for her to die. Then I'll sit by the it's now that I've got time to come and sit by the dead body and be moaning. <sighs> Mommy, if you just come back to life, I'll be with you. I'll even bring you to my house. <laughs> Some of you, where your mother is alive, where she, where she will stay is a problem. You don't want to know. Or it's like, ah, but I'm not the only child. There are many other children. No, but you are the one whose eyes have been open to honor. Honor timelessly. Your father, hey, my father is a drunkard. Support him, finance him, give him honor. God, friends, don't, don't be, don't, you see, huh. Within this honor, the Bible says that your days will be long and it will be well with you. Two blessings. So those who deserve honor, your pastor deserves, like my, I'm your pastor, I deserve honor. Not insults. I deserve respect, reverence. <laughs> Not insults. Then when the person dies, oh, I remember he did this. I remember. I mean, this couple that married yesterday, they were really grateful. I mean, really, really grateful because I was with them and I was there. It was not easy, but I was there until last minute and God came through for them. Yes, they are grateful. That role I've played in your life like somebody said one day that in Kenya, Bishop Edia come about them. If it wasn't for Bishop Eddie, I would have gone mad. And I know, because when I was relating with the person, the person was a bit paranoid. Every day, this one is a witch. This one, my father is this. My sibling, this one wants to kill me. This one wants to do this. I said, look, we are Christians, so if you are in Christ, all things are passed away. All things have become new. And there is, the Bible says that you are the apple of, I used to find scriptures. And I'll tell her that, look, God says that you are the apple of my eye. The apple of his eye, you can't touch somebody's eye so easily like that. The eyeball of somebody, nobody can poke his hand or finger in your eye. The defense mechanism that will come. I can imagine if some, the devil wants to pick you from it's like you are God's, the apple of his eye, like the very Neniko Suyano, and then the devil wants to pick you. I can imagine how God will come with some karate chops. I mean, God is not snake fist, though. He has more fists that are not snake. <laughs> you, you mean God cannot give a karate like a kick? Your hand is coming, by the time it gets here, you see some, hey, God will defend because you are the apple of his eye. He said he will be a wall of fire around her. I used to find the scriptures. I will quote them for her. 
I said, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And that God cannot allow anybody, whether it's a witch or bad. You see, if your father, honor your father. Don't call your father a wizard. Don't think that your father wants to kill you. Honor your, I forced, ah, till the person now patched with the father. So, uh, But one day you can stand somewhere and say that, oh, Bishop Eddie is a fool. Or Bishop Eddie is a uh, whatever. So careful. When people have been good to you, do the right. The Bible says that, <clears throat> woe to those who return evil for good. Yeah. Careful. So honor and honor time your sleep. I, my mommy message now. I, I should have finished for by now. Yeah. Ah. Are you there still? Now, when the, the, the story progresses, we go to Matthew 26. Then one of the twelve called Judas Iscariot went unto the chief priests hmm? to go and do what? And said unto them, what will you give me? And I'll deliver him unto you. And they covenanted with him for 30 pieces of silver. And from that time, he sought opportunity to betray him. You see, it sounds almost like he was just around and he just wanted a little more money and then he went to... But, but the story, they are in so many different places, but I'm just combining. Look at Luke 22, verse 2. Look at what exactly happened that brought this man to the point where he's asking for money. And the chief priests and scribes sought how they might kill him. For they feared the people. You see, that they had an intention, but they couldn't. But verse 3 says... Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains how he might betray him unto them. One of the twelve. One of the twelve. Now Satan, how Satan entered. So you can be around. An anointed person like Jesus and Satan can enter you. And you find yourself now looking for opportunity to steal, to do something, you know, to betray him. Do, do you understand what I'm trying to say? That's why sometimes when you find people who have betrayed their father or their bishop or their uh, spiritual father or biological father or biological mother, you see that they have a lot to say they have a lot to say, a lot to say, a lot to say, a lot, but Satan has entered them. Anybody with his normal mind will never fight his father or his mother. And when Satan enters you, you'll be shocked how the person you loved, you even want to kill him. You even want to arrange arm robbers to ambush him and eliminate him. Like they did to that man in Jirapa. One of the, the, the one of the members who was here used to be here, her father. They killed him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you see the resort he has built, the NBA and development in a dark territory that he has brought to the area. Hey. You should look at it on YouTube. Very nice arrangement with, with private zoo, with animals, white lions from abroad. Do you understand? Now, Krasu Krai is not working. He has been able to do it in Jirapa, the northern region. Very beautiful, chalice, well-designed ring, large land, employed hundreds and hundreds of people in the area. There's no development there. Even government cannot easily develop anything there. And some flimsy reason and excuse, no. You enter the man's private room and you go and stab him and kill him. Somebody who used to give you food to eat. Somebody who used to give you money to spend. Somebody who used to look after your own children. 
somebody who is the reason for your existence for many years. And you see, love can tend to bitterness when Satan enters you. So careful, those of you who are around and you think that when, when, when if somebody gets up and he says, oh, Jesus, I want, I, I want to find him. If you can give me some money, I'll just show you where he prays. Private place where he prays. Because here, they're public. If you catch him, the people, there'll be an uproar. They may lynch you. So I can show you a place. In John 18, verse 1, the Bible says that when they finish dinner, John 18, 1, when Jesus had spoken these words unto them, he went for the disciples over the brook Kedron, and where was a garden into the which he entered with the disciples. And Judas also knew the place. Judas, which betrayed him, knew the place, for Jesus oftentimes resorted Peter with the disciples. You got opportunity to be there in the private corner of the man of God. You were brought so close that when he is having a private prayer time, he will know where he often goes. And you are the one who is now leading people with swords and spears to arrest the person who employed you and made you his financial controller. Judas was close because you know that even in the government, the finance minister is very close to the president. Is that not so? He chose one of his cousins or relatives or something like that to be the finance. Because the financial controller and finance minister is a very close person because he is looking after your money. And the money is the life of your existence and the life of your leadership and the life of your development. So the one who is looking after it is very important. And Judas was the one. And this whole story of Easter is hinged on this. Satan entered into him. I tell you. One bishop said that the day you hear me say something bad about Bishop Dag, know that the devil has entered into me. And he, he, he manifested it so directly. I was wondering whether he has forgotten his own words. And some people, they, don't, they, they say, hey, yeah, I said it, but they, 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 they frown their face and say something else and continue moving on their life. Fear people who are angry. Bible says that don't go with an angry man. Eh? Follow not an angry man. And with a furious man, thou shalt not go. Lest thou learn his ways and get a snare for your soul. So when you go and meet somebody who is angry talking, those of you like Facebook posts where somebody is angry talking, then when he had, eh, let me get more details. You may learn his ways and get a snare for your soul. Careful. I said, Judas, the devil entered into him. It's not that he was thinking of just extra money. The devil actually entered into Judas. And you, if you think that the devil cannot enter you, brace yourself. Be careful. Also, so mom paye pizza. Don't pray so much. Now you don't read the Bible so much. So be careful. You are not so spiritual. Judas now he was with Jesus. Eh? He met Jesus. I am maybe me, I'm not Jesus. Who? Neither is Bishop Dag or any other pastor or even your father. No, none of us is Jesus, but Jesus himself, uh, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, <laughs> crucified, dead, and buried. Yes. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. This Jesus who multiplied bread. This Jesus who walked on the sea. Judas was there when Jesus was walking by their boat on the sea. And Peter said, if it is you, let me come. Peter, G Judas saw it. He was there. And you, you are here. You don't even come to church regularly. You say Satan can't enter you. Ha, huh. Careful. Some of your comments are because you have allowed Satan in. That's why you are making such comments. Some of the thoughts are thoughts from hell. Some of the way you behave, you manifest, they are just your angry outbursts. Sometimes Satan has entered you and is making you do that. Be careful. Be careful. I said be careful. Learn from Judas that you can be close to a very anointed person and still have the devil enter you. 
You see, Peter also experienced Satan in him. Because Jesus turned and said, I get thee behind me, Satan. And, and he was talking about going to Jerusalem. This same thing that and Jude, uh, Peter said, you will not go over my dead body. I can't you go to Jerusalem. You are not going anywhere today. Jesus said, no. Satan is the one talking. The one who is preventing me from going to die on the cross is Satan. But he knows what it will do. Watch out, oh, watch out. Satan is looking for people to inhabit and you, you'll be surprised how you'll be the reason for your mother to die. You. One my woman, I blood pressure, cost Yes, because Satan has entered you and the way you are arguing with your mother, she can't handle it. Yes, me. Me, I'm no casa. I'm not a dear, I'm not a dear. Oh, yes. Hey, then your mother is now, then she just collapses on the chair. Then you just look at her and then you turn and you walk off. Satan has entered you. Only Satan can enter you to make you so callous and so hard hearted. Watch out. So when you hear Judas, don't only think of, oh, Judas, yeah, he was some way, pa, somebody who followed Jesus, pa, no, oh, yeah, Judas, pa, yeah. no, think of yourself. Think of yourself. Because you too, you are working by anointing. You are in a church. You'll be here. Sometimes, sometimes I, some, well, a particular lady who left our church, I, I can't even re- I understand the life of me, what went wrong. No, oh, free as in. Uh, uh, no, no, uh, when I was building this church, how this girl used to give me the key to their house. She and her husband, they give me, she gave me the key to their house that is in the area. So anytime I come, because the church was just being built, there was bare floor, everything. She realized that maybe you need to use a washroom or something like that, freshen up or something. Maybe from here I go to church. So, oh, when you, you can use our house. Then you, you bath or do anything. Even there's food in the fridge. Go there, eat anything you can. Without a word, like it was a or a tuko or call. Not even bye bye. So sometimes when you're a pastor or if you're a father, you may easily not bring people close because it's like when you bring this person close, pe, will be break your heart. Because I come on also back up. be a booby knock or booby knock or booby knock. I ever do a binasa. <laughs> but through God's grace we keep pressing on we keep pressing on we keep pressing on hey what will you give me so that I will deliver him to you what Hey, let me just give you one. I'll just give you one or two more. The chief priests. The other one is a group. The chief priests. I think Caiaphas and the elders and all the council. They are also a group, like people in the leadership and authority. And all the council sought, verse 59, Matthew 26, 59. They sought false witnesses against Jesus to put him to death. Hey. Jesus, <laughs> he's only healing the sick. But you see, when Pontius, uh, they brought him to Pontius Pilate, who is also one of the people, he said, he said, Bible says that, he said, he knew that because of envy, they had delivered him. Envy. Envy can make you deliver somebody to even to death. Envy can make you kill. Oh, maybe they clap for him louder. Or maybe, yeah. I mean, a lot of people go to him. Or maybe, yeah, they give him a lot of money. Or maybe they love him in a way that, you know, is not like yours. Envy. All the chief priests and elders and all the council, they sought. 
So when you are part of a group with authority, what do you use that authority for? Will you use it against somebody? Will you use it against somebody? You perceive as your enemy. You are not the director of something. You hear somebody is coming for some this thing and say, ah, Sakwawe. He is the one who has something like that. Press, press delete, press delete. You need free list in them. You need free list in them. You need free list in them. <laughs> Promotion letter, Bet Naso. Chief priest. Pontius Pilate, the governor. In Matthew 27, 2, he says, And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. A person of high position, great political power, and great influence. When you are of great influence and political power or you have a certain status in society, will you use it for God and his church? Will you use it to advance his kingdom? They came to Pontius Pilate. He himself said that when I analyze all the things you are saying, I see no fault in this man. I don't see any fault in the man. His wife told him that I have nothing to do with this man. I've suffered many things from him in my dreams last night. <laughs> so you yourself can see that sometimes you can, if you analyze and you are objective, you will see that, ah, why are you saying what you are saying? How does it relate to what you are saying? Do you see? And if you are a person who has influence, normally if you don't have influence, oh, you be a, oh, new, new, when something is happening, it's happening for an Ukraine and tomb. But if you are a man of authority, like you have influence, people listen to you. People, maybe like you are in the church, there are some people you sponsor, you give money to, you help, and so on. If you are not careful, they are like your, your private army. <laughs> And then when you, there's a situation, you see that you are controlling them against what should be right. And that's what happened to Pilate. He, he took water and washed his hands. Because I don't see any fault. I don't want to do anything with the man. And I, I see no fault. And yet, he made them whip him. That's why up to today, we say that. Suffered under Pontius Pilate. Because Okan, Uya Dianya Okan, because Apostles Creed is a very short poem. I, be, uh, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate. The guy who washed his hands, you know, we are still mentioning his name now. He, he, he cannot be free. <laughs> <laughs> cannot be free. So, ladies and gentlemen, learn from Pontius that if you ever have some influence, use it for God. You advance God's kingdom and advance what is right. Don't use your position and twist judgment. Forever and ever, it will come to your table that <laughs> you, you, we, we suffered under you. Yes. Or you are in the church. You can help. You can do things. You just look on. Even if you do nothing, it's still at your table. But we are going. When, that's why the Bible says that if you see a wicked man going to hell, do you understand? And you do nothing about it, and he continues to go to hell, his blood will be required from your hand. Even though he didn't do anything, he's the wicked person, and he is going to hell. But oh, dear, oh, oh, you, have not, you have not done anything, isn't it? He is the one who is doing something wicked. And he is the one who is saying, ah, if you go to hell, it's up to you. But once you can see him on the way to hell, the onus is now on you to approach the person and say, my brother, you are going to hell. The, way, the road you are on, it leads to hell. Come away, come aside, turn around, make a U-turn, make a C, make an S, go around, go somewhere, don't continue. If you continue, you will die. Bible says that if you warn him, and he continues, he will die, but his, you'll be free from his blood. But most of the church are full of people who 
people don't want to say, okay, I can see that men are going to hell and I'm going to add myself. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, they, they. it's quite awkward and difficult when I want to approach somebody. Me, I'm not used to, I don't even know how to wrap a girl. So my wife, there, she's the one who came to me. Oh. <laughs> me, I didn't know how to wrap girl, but she was very friendly and so out of her friendship with me, then eventually we became friends. I don't even know whether I even proposed to her, but we realized that we should marry, then we married. But I don't know how to wrap. So if I have to approach somebody to preach or anything, it's difficult for me. I don't know how to do such things. You were not brought up that, that, but you have to. You have to. Because the blood of all of them will be required from your hand. The blood will be required. That's why we are going out. That's why we must go somewhere and preach somewhere. That's why you can't just stand there aloof and say that it's not me. I've not done anything. It's not my problem. It is your problem. Jesus has done the hard part. We must now warn men and cause them to escape hell. Say amen. Yeah. Say I'm part of it now. I'm part of it now. So Barabbas, number five. So when Pontius Pilate, verse 16, and they had, they had then a notable prisoner called Barabbas. Barabbas. Therefore when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus Christ, Jesus, which is called Christ. For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. And when he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him saying, Have nothing to do with this, that just man. For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor answered and said unto them, Whether of the twain will ye that I release unto you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate said unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They, sh- they all said unto him, Let him be crucified. And the governor said, Why? What evil hath he done? But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, he took water, washed his hands before this uh, uh, the multitude saying I am innocent of the blood of this just man see ye to it then answered all the people and said his blood be on us and on our children then released he Barabbas unto them and when he had scourged Jesus he delivered him to be crucified hey Pilate again so now Barabbas if you were Barabbas what will you do That's my question to you today. A very bad, wicked, notorious, notable criminal called Barabbas. You are standing there with somebody who is this perfect sinlessness and sinless perfection. He has done no wrong. A just man. And you a very bad man. You know yourself, God. You dear, you have been sentenced. You know what you did. You know that thing. Even if they didn't sentence you, Christ, you know the things you have done that they didn't even see. Now you come and they put you aside and they say, who should they release? Then the people shout, Barabbas, 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 Barabbas. And then they release Barabbas. So now this Barabbas is going home. And then this just Jesus is being slapped. Then they, 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 they made a, a cord with spikes. When they strike it, it goes into the flesh like nails. They go in and then they draw it. Then try to tear your flesh. And Barabbas is standing aside and is looking on to Jesus. And he's seen that I should have been the one that they are big. Well, I deserve to be beaten. I deserve to be killed. But that man is a just man. What would you have done if you were Barabbas? And all of us are like in the stead of Barabbas. He took our place. He paid a debt. He did not owe. I owed a debt. I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. 
Now I can sing a brand new song, amazing grace. Christ Jesus paid the debt that I could never pay. We could never have paid. Some of you, I know you say, oh, me, I was not so bad, but you are bad. All of us are very bad. Prof, you are always sitting in front of me, so, uh, and then you are also quite tall, so I, I see you more than even your wife. <laughs> I'm sure that there's some badness inside you. Huh? Huh? Of course. <laughs> but I'm sure if your wife told you, you say it's not true. <laughs> <laughs> Wifey, I'm sure there's some badness inside. Yes. I'm sure if a fool says, uh, ah, do you say I'm bad? I, I'm not whatever. Well, what about you? <laughs> Marital quarrels is always like that because it's like you know, never want your spouse to point out to you what you, you are. You can't tell me that I'm bad. You, but you too, what are you? Nonsense. But Jesus paid, the Bible says that there is none righteous. No, not one. No, not one. Not a single one of us. My final personality is Peter. Peter. Pre-Easter, Peter. Jesus went to pray with them. And before he went, he told Peter that Satan has desired to sift you like wheat. But I've prayed for you. Then Jesus said, by this time tomorrow, eh, all of you will be offended because of me and you will run away. Peter said, never. Me? Never. If all men should forsake you, me alone, I'll be there. What? How can you say that? You can't say that of me. Me, I'm with you always. Hey. It was not easy for Jesus. Who? All the other disciples also said the same. You see, but when they went to pray, instead of praying, Jesus said, pray, oh, lest you enter into temptation. Peter fell asleep. Somebody that they have said that you are likely to betray. The, 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 the next day you are going to run away. And then you are talking. Instead of talking, you should be praying. And all of us are like that. Instead of praying, we like talking. Oh, me. I'm, I'm, somebody said, I'm lighthouse till I die. <laughs> I'm lighthouse till I die. I'm lighthouse. Don't just talk, I'm lighthouse till I die. Better people than you have been lighthouse till they die and they didn't survive. Following Jesus, you have to pray constantly. Pray for yourself. Put your hand on your chest and say, Father, have mercy on me. Humble me. Sh deliver me from Satan entering me and, and using me into something bad. I never want to destroy something that I've helped to build. Oh, Jesus, help me. You have to pray for yourself. Peter didn't pray. Jesus was praying for three hours so that he doesn't change his mind when they come and arrest him. And he was saying, you two pray because you two, when they arrest me, you will run away. All of you will be offended because of me. And the uh, Bible says, Peter protested vehemently. He said, vehemently. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Then when they arrested Jesus, <laughs> he was standing, he, was, he followed, that was a, Peter followed afar off. Then one girl said, ah, but this one of the disciples said, no, I'm, I'm a foolish girl, I don't know him. <laughs> then he was standing somewhere, the people said, ah, but you look like one of the disciples said, me? It's not me. He began to swear. I swear my father can't turn her I've never seen the man before. <laughs> Another group, he went to stand with them to warm himself. They said, ah, even the, the tongue, you see, like, if you hear an Ewe man speaking English, you can hear. And sometimes when you hear a fancy man, a real thick fancy man speaking fa uh, English, you will hear. Yes. <laughs> and an Ashanti man who is a real Ashanti man, if he's speaking English, by all means, that's mine. Yeah. They do fly day, and I'm a deep blonde blood, and I'm a by all means, you know that you know that he's from there. <laughs> and if you hear a gun man whose accent is from Bukom and he's speaking English, you will know that yes. Uh, uh, uh. 
when I told Peter, I told Peter, uh, Akashi, I didn't want to help me. And I was telling him that instead of he, 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 he eating the food, he should eat the food. Hey, you know that he's from there. So they said, I know, even your, your tonation, your tonation betrays you. Then the Bible says he swore. He said, never. I've never seen the man. Then he heard, Coca -co. For the first time the whole morning, the cock had not crowed. But when he finished the third betrayer, then he heard, Coca -co -co. He said, oh, yeah, I denied. Yeah, I denied. Yeah, I denied. Oh. Peter, the chief apostle, Instead of praying, he slept. Sometimes when we call for prayer, you see that you are falling asleep. And then you think that you, dear, you are different. But I'm here to tell you that learn from all these personalities that you can be Peter, but, be, but, but, but rise up and pray. You can be Peter, rise up and pray. You can be close to Jesus, rise up and pray. So that you'll be delivered. You'll be delivered. Stand to your feet, please. Father, thank you for all these persons you have revealed to us to learn from, to study. We pray that indeed we'll be delivered from being like Pontius Pilate or the council or Judas. But may we truly honor like this woman who broke the alabaster box. And may we stand strong serving you and following you all the days of our lives. I pray. I pray for everyone. Place your hand on your hand. Let me pray for you. Like Jesus said, Peter, Satan, I desire to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when you are converted, pray for your brethren also. Father, I extend my hand over your, my brethren. I pray for the protective covering of our Savior. The kind of protection you gave Peter when you prayed for him because Satan had desired to sift him like wheat. And for all of us, we know the agenda Satan has for us. But my prayer is that there will be divine escapes, divine immu Im immunity, and divine deliverance from every trap and snare of the devil. Save our hearts and protect Satan from entering our hearts. Give us a shield over our hearts. Oh, Father, that we may be humble. Oh, yes, that we may be meek. And that we will be sober. In the name, and prayerful. Prayerful, Lord. So we can stay in the hour of temptation. So we can still relate in the hour of temptation. So we can still stay on the right road in the hour of temptation. I pray for everyone here. Save us, oh my Savior. Keep us, oh keeper of Israel. Deliver us, oh deliverer of Israel. Marota sikia mahandala barade. Setola mihandala baroka sikada. Repa tua satandala. Anyone whose heart is contaminated, I pray for the balm of Gilead. To eliminate every contamination and cause us to walk in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. In Jesus' name. Amen. Clap for Jesus. You shall be saved. You shall be delivered. Oh yes. One day they will be talking about you in honor, very honorably. Your father, your mother, your pastor, the people you have to honor, God will just cause your name to always be remembered in an honorable way. In the name of Jesus. I like this, my son. Oh, my brother. Oh, you're very good. This, my brother, is very wonderful. This, my son. Oh, God bless him. If it was not for this, my son, I'll be homeless. If it was not for this, my daughter, I'll be finished. God bless her. My daughter, live long, eh? My daughter, live long. Your father, your one, you, anyone you have honored will bless you. You will live long, I tell you. They will bless you every day they remember your name. It will never be that when your name is remembered by somebody who will just be saying that, God reward him for all his wickedness. It will never be so with you in Jesus' name. Every head bowed and every eye closed. You are here this 
um, morning, you are not a born again Christian. Yes, you stand like Barabbas with all your wicked ways and sinful ways. But he will take your place still. Jesus will take your place. Jesus will take your place. Jesus will take your place. Instead of dying, you will live. Instead of going to hell, you go to heaven. Because he went to hell for you already. As every head is bowed and every eye closed, I want to pray for you. Wherever you are standing, just lift up your hand and say, Pastor, please pray for me. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to be born again. I want to go to heaven when I die. I'm not sure. If I was to die this afternoon, I don't know whether I'll go to heaven or hell. But today I want to be sure. Please pray for me. If you are here like that, lift up your right hand so I can pray for you. Anybody here like that? Anybody here like that? Lift up your right hand. Pastor, pray for me. I want to give my life to you. Lift it up high so I can see it. Anybody here like that? Anybody here like that? Yes, I see your hand. I see your hand. Anybody here? God bless you. I see your hand also. God bless you. God bless you. If you have lifted your hand, come to me right in front here. God bless you. Into my heart. Come into my heart. Come in. Oh, clap for them as they come. Heart. Lord Jesus, come in today. Come in to stay. Come in to my heart. Lord Jesus. If you are still standing there, but you are not sure. Maybe you are a Christian, but you know that you are backsliding and you need to rededicate your life because you have not been going to church well. You don't read your Bible. You don't pray really, but you want to say, Pastor, pray for me. I want to rededicate my life. Come to me. I'm going to pray for you. Lift up your hand, those of you who are here. Say after me, Heavenly Father, thank you for today. I come to you just as I am. Please forgive me for all my sins. And wash me with your precious blood. From today, I belong to Jesus. I will follow Jesus for the rest of my days. Please write my name in the book of life. I'm yours forever. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.